Do you have a knife? I don't know. I don't have a knife. So we're going to crack it. Uh, okay. Are you going to bust it with your... How are we going to do that? Your you hands. Want, you want me to hold it with my hands? <laughs> you can't crush it? I don't know. I've never tried before. Okay, well... Don't people usually use their knee? That seems like it makes more sense. Um, you could use your knee or you could just pop it on the ground. I think we could pop it on the ground. But won't it get dirty? <laughs> well, it will. <laughs> that look says everything. Hello everyone and welcome again to the Johnny Appleseed Organic Village. I'm here once again with Shani McCabe from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds and it is a very exciting day because it's harvest time for these watermelons, part two in our series on how to grow them and what to do with them once you've grown them. And today we're going to pick these and we're going to make some watermelon gazpacho. Now I have never had a soup that's sweet before, so I'm super excited to try it. Before we get started, Shane's going to tell us what we need to look for when we're harvesting a watermelon. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to you. Super. Awesome. Excited. <laughs> soup. I'm very excited. Oh, oh. oh. God, that Sorry. Was awful. You said it. You no, said I'm, it. I go in for dad jokes normally, oh. so I'm here for that actually. But yep. Anyway, it's fine. I had to. It was good. I wish I'd have thought of it, honestly. <laughs> What do we have here? Uh, okay, so this is our Georgia rattlesnake watermelon. We wanted to grow a local heirloom. We're here in South Georgia. We've done it. Um, so what we want to do is, this is like the finishing off period for watermelons. So let's talk about what you're supposed to do right when your watermelons are coming in and they're starting to get big. First thing to know is that they have watermelon in the name, so it could be a little misleading, but actually your watermelons do, they do want to be on the dry side as they're maturing. And that is going to affect the sweetness of the watermelon and help them to prevent cracking. Um, excess water at the very end of the growing period when the fruits are really maturing is going to cause the water, the fruit to become excessively watery in flavor and can even cause them to prematurely crack and ruin your harvest. So we've cut back the watering in the last few weeks to let them just ripen up and get super sweet. And if you are experiencing a little dry period, go out and make sure to check and pick any watermelons that you can at that time. We've had about seven days of dry, so we're super lucky because we've got some extra sweet watermelons here. Um, so what you're going to do is you got your dry window, you're going to get out there and you're going to check for ripeness. But as you've probably experienced before, not every watermelon is picked perfectly ripe, correct? Absolutely true. Yeah, yeah sometimes so. you get a skunk. Right. Yeah. So how would you prevent that? Right. Okay, to prevent getting skunked with your watermelon, um, there are a few ways to check. I have a really good way that I like to follow, but then there's other, another way that a lot of people use as well. So my um, first technique is to follow you. So you pick your fruit that you're looking at, and you follow the fruit to the closest tendril. That's the little curly cue. See it right there? The little curly cue. The closest curly cue should be brown and wrinkled and dried up. And when that's brown, wrinkled, and dried, that's a great way, that's a great indicator to tell you that the watermelon is ripe and ready. So we can see this one isn't. This one's not. However, yeah. I did defer to the second test because I thought this one sounds pretty low. So are you telling me that in the supermarket when you see those old ladies like drumming on the side of them that that's actually a real yeah. genuine test it's one for of watermelon the tests. ripeness? Because I've always thought that that was just like some sort of wives tale or something and that didn't actually have anything to do with it. There's an intersection between fact and folklore and I believe this sits somewhere in the middle but <laughs> I have found good luck in knocking the fruit. Now this is you know, we're going to learn as we film, we might be wrong, but this does sound pretty low. If we just compare it right here, yeah, it it's sounds, higher. That sounds like a rock. So I think, um, do you have a knife? I don't know. I don't have a knife. <laughs> so we're going to crack it. Uh, okay. Are you going to bust it with your... How are we going to do that? Your you hands. Want, you want me to hold it with my hands? <laughs> you can't crush it? I don't know. I've never tried before. Okay, well. Don't people usually use their knee? That seems like it makes more sense. Um, you could use your knee or you could just pop it on the ground. I think we could pop it on the ground. But won't it get dirty? <laughs> well, it will. <laughs> that look says everything. It will, but we're going to go for it anyway. All right. <laughs> wow! Oh my god! Thank you, sir. 
So this is called the heart of the watermelon. It does tend to be the tastiest. Mm. And? It was perfectly ripe. Awesome. I'm perfectly- The thump test. I'm perfectly damp. All right, now that we have a harvested watermelon and it's not in very good shape, but it's in all right shape. It's in edible shape. Is it in good enough shape to make a soup with? Of course, yeah. All right. Well, now that we have this harvested watermelon, we're going to head into the kitchen where Shani's going to show us how to make some delicious soup. Let's go. Let's do it. So we're making a watermelon gazpacho, and it's simple, and it should only take about 15 minutes to make. Very quick, and it is not cooked. It is a raw soup, very refreshing for summer. So what we have is uh, fine diced vegetables. You can get creative with the vegetables that you use, but I specifically like what we have here. Um, we have heirloom tomatoes from our garden, diced very finely. We have tomatillos. Uh, this is a purple variety of tomatillo, diced fine. We've got a squeeze of lime. We're going to have diced cucumber, fine diced cucumber. We've got red onion and we've got some basil. Of course, we've got our watermelon, which you could either use a food processor or a blender. Today, we're going to push it through a sieve. We've got a crack of salt and pepper. These are the ingredients that you're going to need. And then after you've got a fine dice on everything, it really just comes down to assembling the soup. And as you can see, we don't have exact measurements on this recipe. Um, there's a saying uh, that baking is a science and cooking is an art. And baking, you need exact measurements to make sure that all the chemical reactions happen correctly. But with cooking, that's not the case in most cases. And so we're just going to uh, go from the soul and we're going to use things just as we like them in the right amounts. And you'll see I've got an especially fine dice on the onions. That's because it's a particularly pungent food. So I don't want you to get a big, big bite of onion in one, any one bite in this soup. So I've made sure to really temper its flavor by making small fine dices. So let's add the ingredients. We're going to add cucumbers. Plenty of cucumber. Have a little onion. We're going to add tomato. Got some small hot peppers here. If you like peppers, that's optional. Tomatillo. Next, we're going to push the watermelon through the sieve. You can include the seeds if you'd like to eat the watermelon seeds. I assure you, they're actually highly nutritious. They add nice crunch to the soup. But if you'd like a thin watermelon um, soup, then you could just push it through the sieve like this. Alternatively, you can blend it. And we're just going to pour the watermelon over the veggies. A final thing I'm going to do is garnish with basil. Crack of salt. Crack of pepper. There's nothing that's going to cool you down better than this soup. The watermelon is actually has a natural refrigerant in it that will cool your internal body temperature. Same goes for cucumber. It also has a natural refrigerant. Um, even hot pepper, in a lot of countries in Latin America, they eat hot peppers to actually cool their bodies down. So a little hot pepper will do great in cooling your body down. All right, thank you guys for joining us for this video on how to harvest and make something with your watermelon. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, follow, and share Johnny Appleseed Organic on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And follow rareseeds.com and Bigger Creek Heirloom Seeds on Facebook. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, and we're on YouTube as Rare Seeds. Awesome. Catch you guys next time.